I am down here at Lacamas Lake. Uh, Pods just had her uh, art opening it in Camas at 421 Cedar. 421 is my number. It's my birthday at 421. But uh, there's a bunch of people there. The artsy crowd. It's a very nice opening too. It's got very large and very bright paintings, acrylics. There's a lot of cool stuff at that art gallery actually. Uh, watch out for fish hooks. <laughs> So I stopped by here after I put the last uh, $3.75 I could scrounge up out of $2 bills and a whole bunch of pennies. Buck seventy-five in pennies. So I can make it back home. Right. Yeah, usually the water's up, up here to fill the fishing hooks and stuff in there. Try not to step on any hay. Boulders. Whoa. This used to be such a beautiful lake. Now it's a beautiful scenery for the millionaires who live on the other side, right? That's all cool, right? Because they built big houses, you know, and lots of people live in them. And it's still, you know, down here in this little secluded area. And they get to see this side of the lake. Ah, but that's the problem. See, because they just put in all along that road there, the whole waterfront, they just put in city water and sewer and gas piping. So that they can start selling lots along here and building on this side of the lake. So soon, maybe not in five years, ten years, but twenty years from now, instead of beautiful trees and forests all around this wonderful freshwater volcanic lake that goes into a stream called Lacamas Creek that is even more spectacular than the uh, the lake is. It will be all houses on both sides. So the people on one side's houses can sit and look at the majesty and beauty of the lake and the houses on the other side of the lake. Meanwhile, on the, uh, a little bit farther to the north and to the west, we're turning pasture lands and farmlands into the, uh, subdivisions of McMansions and freaking crap box townhouses after we cut all the trees down of course under the chemtrail sky tonight A little knobby there see the shadow on it get out of my skin you cannot exist at my frequency. I am greater than the sum of you. These are just things I like, let the uh, Morgellons know. Let the universe know. You know, you have to uh, tell it what to do. You look at where you got the issue, like Obviously not right knobby thing coming up at my knuckles, but there's also one at my wrists and one at my elbows and one at my knees and one at my fucking ass. One up each vertebrae of my spine. Anyway, back to my point. My mud is working, my iodine, potassium iodide is working. My copper chloride baths are working. And the wrapping in copper is definitely working. See, there's got to be a jet flying over and I'm getting the pulse 
and getting the knob. I'm a little agitated. There's massive Kim trails. The jet ski guys are getting all crazy. Look at these guys paddling out there. Pure, obviously they're insane. It's just a plane coming. But anyway, I got the uh, strange discoloration too. Mm -hmm. I bet I sparkle in the sun. It's my new copper. I like this one a lot. I'm gonna have to make some more. And this was my leg copper I put up here on this one. It needs a little fine tuning. But all in all, my uh, Lewis River clay mat, clay chunks. Those things are awesome. And I do my copper chloride bath and I take a big chunk of the clay. Fresh out of the river. Right? Well, not fresh out the river, it's been out of the river for a long time, but, but it's from the river. And it's so fine and so smooth. It has these little, uh, the only thing in it that's not you know, pure smooth clay is like these tiny little quartz. I wouldn't even call them flakes because you can't feel anything grind against your skin, but there it sparkles in the sun. Though. It's got little a million little sparkles in it. Anyway, I should do a video on just that. Uh, it's it's great mud. It draws anything and everything nasty out of your skin. It just grabs hold of it and sucks it out, and it kind of leaves a residue. You see right here, I got this, uh, this is where the, the shit is, infected areas. The infected areas are this darker coloration here. And also where it's lighter, but this is where the clay stuck. So it's the most in affected area. It's around, see it's right around my knee of course. I get the same phenoms on my wrists, right here, right there. And well, probably not at my ankles noticeably right now, I don't know. The bottoms of my feet are like glazed with the stuff. I'm trying to, like, I, I try, you can't even take a grinder and get that shit off. It defies being removed, but it's letting go slowly. Hey, look, it's Faggy with airplane, hey. Fuck you and your faggot fucking plane. Fucking sack of shit. Faggy McAirplane. This is my private plane. I have it follow me everywhere I go. Just in case of trouble. Uh, anyway, I stopped by here. Do a little grounding. Watch some airplanes go by. Documented. I'm a documentarian. I'm a documentary filmmaker. Hey, babe. I'm a documentary filmmaker. Oh, yeah? What have you made? Well, I made a, a video about 9-11. Oh, that sounds exciting. It is. Standing up to law enforcement, posing hard questions to them, watching them dodge the questions. It's a lot of fun. I bet it is. Ravage me, big boy. Not. <laughs> I'm not the right kind of activist, apparently. If I was cool activist, I'd get chicks. Instead, I'm just like... I'm the annoying guy that talks about chemtrails and microwaves and quit staring at your fucking phone because it's feeding signals straight into your pituitary, your, your pineal gland <laughs> and your pituitary gland. Alright, well, it's time to continue on. Ed Spaghetti McJetliner. Glides ever so slowly through the trees. Because, you know, we're 15 miles from the airport 
So naturally, a jetliner needs to descend down and cruise right over the top of all of these houses and people at the lake. It makes a lot of sense, you see. Besides, you know, really, uh, flight controllers, it's such a stressful job. I mean, we could never hope to understand the complexities of, of routing air traffic. So, if they gotta fly right over everybody's house over here, 15 miles from the airport, <laughs> who am I to say that that's not normal? I can't say it's unprecedented. Prior to the last uh, six or seven years that this has slowly been building, that didn't happen. Never had them flying over around here. But now it's continuous day and night. They take a break for, you know, a day or two every once in a while to try and give people some recent memory when it wasn't like that. But it's pretty much continuous. Oh, here's the Audi. I got it back together. It's, uh, it's doing pretty good now. I've got a weird noise in the rear end. Probably differential bearing or maybe this wheel bearing. I'm hoping it's just this wheel bearing. It would be nice. The bugs are coming out. I better get it. I must get home before the sun sets or my Audi will turn into a pumpkin. All right, signing off, carry on.